Ace up the sleeve. Content and SEO. Regardless of the vertical, country-specific content and SEO optimization is a must-have for any affiliate with a target audience. Let's see how the experts make it happen. Moderated by Andy Blackburn. Game on. Sean Bianco. Game changer. Marcus Sandstrom. Mr. Authority. Peter Eckmark. Internet Vikings. Good afternoon, everybody. I was going to start by introducing the rest of the panelists, but um, the auto queue has done that for me. So um, I think we'll dive straight into it. I think we've had a lot of discussion so far in the last half hour or so that I've been in here about different forms of content and video content, especially looking at Twitch and streaming. But um, I think written content and the way you promote that written content still, I think, forms a key part of what every affiliate is trying to achieve. So um, from an affiliate standpoint, if I go to you, Sean, because sure. you're the closest and you work with a lot, of, uh, a lot of different affiliates and operators and stuff. Where do you see, if we're looking at this kind of country-specific content, where do you think the, the easy wins are, and where are the more harder kind of pitfall-laden roads to so, good content? Yeah, I think that the first question you have to ask yourself is, you know, language versus region. So you have a lot of people who are, you know, have sites which are ranking well for them in uh, Spain than trying to go into Latin America. You have operators who have uh, websites which are operating in Spain and then trying to go into the rest of Latin America with dollar, you know, as a currency. Um, so the first thing you have to ask yourself is, what, how does my product or my website receive in the local region? What is the knowledge of the audience? As an example, if you had to take an operator out of Spain and put it in uh, Mexico or some other Latin American company, you'd find that it's quite a different region over there. The products that you're selling to the Spanish audience are not relevant to this. Sure, and dialects have nuances of language as well, so it, yeah. that, that kind, of, kind of comes into play. And what's you know one of the key things that you want to do, what that you want to satisfy when you're thinking about this? User intent. And when products are very, and casinos and websites are very well received, and the knowledge level is very high in Europe and it's very low in those countries then the expectations of the users are completely different. So the way that you educate those users and the type of content you write, in my opinion, is the most important thing to focus on. I mean, from, from that point then, obviously, a, a, a user is a player. A player finds an affiliate site and redirects. And um, Peter, you, you and I were speaking earlier. Um, you've actually only just joined Internet Vikings, but your history is in very much operator side operations and, and tech. So what were the kind of, what, following on from Sean, what Sean was just saying, um, what did you find from, a, from an operator standpoint when working in different regions with those nuances of languages? I know you're up in Scandinavia and, and those sorts of territories. Well, it's hard to have a short answer to that, but I would say, generally speaking, quality always beats quantity. And localization, uh, not only when it comes to local languages, of course, because you have to be uh, adapting to the cultures. I mean, Asia versus Latam, it's a huge difference. Uh, like I said previously, videos worked in, in Japan, and in Lapan it was a completely different story, because they are predominantly looking into sports, for instance. And uh, in Europe, maybe the top 10 casinos still. Yeah, and I, look like, I agree with the localization side. Um, from, from, that, from that kind of aspect, like going into Asia, we just had a talk before about, about the Asian market. I mean, the, the multitude of languages and variant, variants uh, lead you to, if you are going to be a content-driven affiliate and you're looking for SEO-driven traffic, those, those costs can amount and surmount quite, quite quickly if you're writing in a native language of yours being English or, or Maltese, and now you're trying to get that content kind of translated into different languages. Would you, would you be looking for translation services, or are you looking for content writers that can write na natively in that language? I'll, I'll go to you, Marcus. Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. We, we work a lot with Japan right now. And uh, I mean, if you, if you send an article to, to, to someone in English and, and, and ask them to translate, uh, we are seeing that it's hard to, to, to convert clients there. Because 
I, I mean, like we talked about, localization is, is so important. Some, the, the language used in English is totally different than what we use in, in Japanese. So what we do in Japan right now is we have a team of writers in Japan, and then we have quality insurance checkers who live abroad in Australia, for example, who are native Japanese, but they are basically native English now as well. So they go through all of the articles and make sure that, that it's uh, correct and it's converting. I mean, what we see, is, uh, for example, is that um, in Japanese market, they would read, I mean, a page they could read four or five minutes, uh, and compared to, to the Swedish market, maybe they read, they're on the page for like 30 seconds or a minute or something like that. So uh, in the Japanese market, they really want to know the background, like who is behind the site, is this something I can trust, uh, um, uh, when will I get my money out, like they have different kind of questions than um, compared to the Swedish or the Danish market or, or um, other European markets. So I would absolutely go for um, uh, Con like content written by uh, you give them the guidelines, but they have to write it, not translate it. So that higher level of kind of, of dwell time, and then obviously almost like pre-engagement with the brand. Do you think that then leads to to higher lifetime value for those players, or is it actually lead to a lower conversion rate because they spend so much time researching it, they end up kind of falling out of the funnel and not converting at all? Uh, I, I think it's, it's higher uh, value, so the revenue rate is going to get higher for uh, for sure. Uh, the, the conversion rates are lower. Um, uh, that's just the way we see it right now. But what we have to look at is the whole, um, the whole funnel, because I think many times we just, uh, if you're working on an affiliate site, you just work on uh, look on the affiliate side of it. So, um, I mean, everything has to match from the, from, from I mean, the, the, the operators offer and the, and the casinos, uh, the affiliates offer have to have to match. So, we did, we've been doing a lot of A/B tests with. Um, uh, on uh, e-commerce sites in, in, in the States, and we're just starting to do A-B tests on uh, affiliate sites as well right now to, to try to change the, the copy and the content and see, like, especially on the Japanese market, because we don't know so much yet. We, ha we really have to base it on data. So we, we look and say, okay, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, if, 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 we, if, we, if we delete those banners on the right side here, or if we, you know, make it clear with the, with the USPs on, on, the, on, on the separate offers, how, how much more is going to convert compared with the, with the A version. And then we just split test it all the time. And it's, it's a lot of traffic, so it's pretty easy to do. I, I come from the e-commerce background, and, and sometimes it's hard because you need at least a thousand transactions to get enough data from it. But uh, the, the, I mean, the affiliates have a lot of conversions, so that's not a problem. Yeah, and I guess what you can say also is that uh, not e every keyword is equal. Some keywords are that you're ranking for are going to be more based on informational requests, while others are going to be more based on, you know, I play online casino right now, and that's going to be a transactional kind of request. So uh, when it comes to the point of is, is there too much information to convert a person, could that get them to drop off eventually? It depends at what stage of the buying cycle they're at. Sure. And when you look at places like Brazil as an example, how do you get people who don't even trust their own banks to a certain extent <laughs> to trust the website talking about casinos which they don't know about when they're researching things like how to play online casino, how to bet, what are odds, these kinds of things. So then it becomes your responsibility as an affiliate to then educate these people and provide them to a casino or an oper a sports book operator at the right step of the process that they can then convert. Yeah. So it takes you back to kind of what the search's intent was to begin with, right? Yeah. And then, but also then for an affiliate, that's just giving you yet another set of topics you can go and write or create content around. If you're going to target Brazil and no one trusts the banks, then what are the alternative payment methods we can do? Yeah. How else can we get cash from cash? I had the conversation earlier today with someone, the man who can work out how to pay, take cash online will be king of the world. But for now, we have alternative payment methods, and that's voucher codes and, and Skrill and stuff like that. Um, but what about alternative? We were talking before about other forms of content. So you want to go into a couple of new markets, new territories. I'm taking back from what people were just saying on the last panel about Twitch. Where is that video content coming from? Are we going to do creative content in those new languages as well? Anybody got experience in doing kind of video in new territories? So um, when it comes to video content and so forth, it's always an ace up your sleeve. And I believe it's something which is going to keep people on the page for longer, which is going to drive up your longevity. And it's something which takes time and it takes money, which is why not a lot of people do it. It's a lot cheaper to get content and it's a lot uh, cheaper to deliver it. You have to look at what's happening with your competition. I always believe that competition is what, to a certain extent, drives the kind of activity which you have to put on the page to be able to compete on that keyword. 
And if you look at something like, I don't know, let's all talk about casino and gambling, right? Have you guys heard of KSI and Logan Paul? <laughs> you know, these guys are YouTubers. Um, uh, if you were to research for these guys, uh, they had like a big fight, you know, two YouTubers fighting just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, UFC, a professional yeah, a boxing UFC, fight, UFC, you know. Boxing match, yeah. You know, I challenge you to search for these guys on YouTube. Most likely you would see that, you know, the search results have videos in them because that's what their audience want. They want to see them talk. They want to see them, their reactions. They want to see the fight. So it depends on, uh, if we're talking at it from an SEO point of view, what people are expecting, what the competition currently is in the market, and what you have, you know, realistically the bank to go after. Yeah, I mean, I'm, when I'm looking at search results now, I see a lot of video content in that top quarter, even sometimes surpassing where the advertising, uh, advertising showing. Um, from, from a more technical standpoint now, uh, if we're going to look at really localizing a, a brand, if we're an operator or an affiliate who wants to take that next step, um, you've already, say, been successful in, say, English and Spanish, and now you want to go into some Scandinavian languages, you want to expand your, your Spanish across Latin America. Um, Peter, I don't know what your experience is from, from being at Internet Vikings for only, for only three weeks, but perhaps <laughs> from, from prior to that, where would we look at, say, uh, going after just having a new subdomain, so ar.brand.com versus having a top-level domain from that country or just a subdirectory? Again, quality will beat uh, quantity any day of the week, actually. And um, particularly in the immature market, you, you, you spoke about Twitch, for instance. Inter inst interestingly enough, that doesn't exist in Japan. Um, so we were experimenting with Facebook TV and other sorts of, of streaming medias. But quality-wise, I would say that uh, the perception is that the field has to be the expert in their field. I mean, the operator is providing a service, an online casino but you have to niche yourself as an affiliate, particularly in an immature market. And you need to have your feet on the ground. So localization, Portuguese in Portugal and Portuguese in, in Argentina, sorry, Brazil is completely different. Sure. Um, uh, I was gonna say as well, Marcus, you obviously work in a number of different territories. You've got experience out in Japan. Yeah. Um, dot J, does a dot JP domain give you that additional authority? Is it more of perception, like Peter's just said? Or if you are Facebook, is, if, would it be jp.facebook.com to take priority, or would facebook.jp be the more trusted version of the site? Yeah. No, it's a good question. I, been, I mean, I think everybody has different opinions here, but I agree uh, with, uh, I mean, it's, it's the, it's, it's, so what we did, we looked at different, uh, the top ranking thousand sites, whatever, in, 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 in different uh, geos, and then we looked at what domains are they using, and, and well, I are they using that .co or that, uh, you know, .co .jp or .com or whatever, and, and in most countries, I mean, it's, it's, it's .com is, is dominating SEO-wise, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't personally don't think it matters, so, so um, uh, you know, for Japan, we choose to go with .com. Uh, we, we are going to try it. And that's the interesting thing. I, I think you, because it's so early in market, you, you need to try it. So you, the, ideally, you want to put up two different sites and A-B test it and, and see if it makes any difference. And I think it's going to make so small difference so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, and I think the question is, what's your overall strategy, right? I mean, anyone who says that they know exactly how Google works is a liar, right? Um, but one thing that we can say is that we understand signals. We've all come up with our different hacks from our years of knowledge in the industry, our own testing to identify data points, which eventually correlates to something, right? That's where our tricks come in. And when we're looking at CCTLDs, you know, domain subdirectory versus uh, subdomain, um, would it hurt to have a .jp domain? Probably not. If the server is based in the region also, very close, you know, could it be a signal? Probably yes. Um, but it depends on your strategy. If you are going to go specifically for that region, yes, I would suggest doing it. Um, but if you're going to be multinational and you want to explore different markets, then why split your link profile? Why split your, you know, your, your keyword profile? You know, so the only reason why I would you know, ever go for uh, CCTLD is if you're going to be specifically focused in that region. Otherwise, you have to start again from scratch every time you go into a new region. When it comes to uh, subdomains, um, it's a similar story that you're splitting your you're splitting your link and your your link your li your link base, and you're also splitting the amount of keywords which you have. And you know, each and every time you go into a new region, you're going to have to go through the process of getting that site crawled, getting that site to have links pointing back to it, getting that site to get a certain authority. While when you have it on a subdirectory structure to a certain extent, that spills over to the new regions which you go into. 
Peter, you got something to add to that, I think? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, regarding Japan, again, we have to keep in mind that it's illegal to market a casino yeah. in Japan. So currently, a .jp domain is perhaps not the way to go. But next year, things will change. You have the Olympics in Japan and also the offline casino, land-based casinos becoming legal. So it's, it's about to change. But Currently, I would actually say it's a downside to it because the Japanese people would probably think it's more bogus if it's Japanese than a .com or other domains. Regulation driving innovation yet yes. again, right? Since you were the first person that's brought up kind of link profiles and link authority, um, when you're link building, how much more in depth do you have to go when you're trying to drive up, say, your authority in Argentina rather than just in a language like Spain? You, you made the mention as well of kind of region versus language. So do you kind of specifically link build on domains that are hosted on those, on those kind of TLDs and in, out of IPs in those countries, or do you still spread it wherever you can? So what I like to do is look at data. And I like to look at relevant data. Um, if you look at how the SEO industry performs as a whole, there are a lot of different tools out there which are providing their own calculation of what they assign a power to a domain on. And you kind of like have to figure out, like lick your finger, put it in the air, and figure out what's most relevant for you. And that's when you start en enriching data because you can't trust one source of co one source of data. Uh, no source of data is 100% correct. There's a lot of lies in the market to a certain extent. Yeah. So uh, it always depends on the competition on the specific keyword in the specific market that you're in. So that's going to define what kind of link building activity you have to produce. And when you're looking at different kinds of uh, data points for specific links which you want to build, I mean, there's no end to it. Do you, want to, um, uh, if, do you want to look at IPs and understand if there's any correlation and footprints between one domain and another of those PBNs? Do you want to work with PBNs or not? Is it part of your strategy? Is the long-term strategy? Is it a short-term strategy? Um, are you going yeah, to be churn and burn affiliate versus your affiliate that wants to build there a, you go. a long, a long term kind yeah. of reputation on a single brand? And then you also have the situation of understanding are these websites relevant to the business which I am trying to promote? Uh, how do you understand the categories and subcategories of those websites? How do you understand the language that they're in, you know, at mass and at scale? Um, these are things which we work on and which we have automated and we're enriching data on to be able to provide people with uh, all of the data in one place to make the right decisions. Then you also have to understand what the competition has done, because there's a lot to learn from what other people have done. If you're going to take that, you know, do this and try it out, who knows? But if you see what other people have done and you take uh, learnings from what they've done in the past, especially regionally, and you have to do that, each region you go into, you have to do your own kind of activity within that specific region, on and off page, learn from your competitors, learn from their mistakes. At the end of the day, the only person who doesn't lie to you is Google. Go on the SERP page, see the top 10 positions, seeing what's being, being rewarded, seeing what's being penalized. So with not long left, just very quickly, I'm going to put you all on the spot just for any affiliates out there, from Peter down to, down to Sean. Give me one tip for an affiliate right now in terms of their content marketing. Uh, look at user-generated content. One. Um, I would say focus on, especially for, for the Asian markets, look at the really good uh, quality because you're going to have a hard time to get people to link to you if you have bad quality content, really hard time. So get good quality. And Sean? Build a brand. Build a brand. Uh, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you to the panelists for their time as well.